Okay, today I'm going to be seeing if light can push. So I'm going to be trying to use my 32,000 lumen flashlight and also my 5,000 milliwatt laser to see if I can push things with light. So in order to push something, you have to impart a force on it. For example, if I wanna push my hand, I have to put a force on it. As long as I put a force on it, I can move it. So for example, to move this tape, I have to apply a force to it, which means I'm going to change the momentum of this tape. So force is just a change in momentum over a change in time. But what does momentum mean? Well, momentum is just mass times velocity. So does that mean in order to have momentum, you have to have mass? So you may have heard before that light has no mass whatsoever. And I just told you that momentum is mass times velocity. So does that mean that light has no momentum? If that were true, that would mean that light could not push something. But it's been known ever since the 1600s that light exerts a pressure on objects. But how could that be? Because I told you that in order to exert a force, there has to be a change in momentum over time. But then I just told you that momentum is mass times velocity. And if light has no mass, then how can it push something? Well, the reason has to do with something called relativistic mass. Newton wasn't quite right when he said that momentum equals mass times velocity. The more correct statement is the special relativity statement that says, momentum equals the relativistic mass times velocity. And this is something that Einstein discovered. He found that when a particle is at rest, it has a certain mass, but once you start moving it, it has a different mass. And he called this the relativistic mass. So as velocity increases, so does the mass. So ever since then, we had to define two different masses. We had to call something a rest mass, the mass of something when it wasn't moving, and then it's relativistic mass, which is its mass while it's moving. So light has no rest mass, but it does have a relativistic mass. And because of that point, it can actually get really weird. So let's say in this box, there's just a complete case of reflective mirrors. So let's say I were able to shine a flashlight into here. And once I shined it in, I closed it off and I was able to contain the light just by continually bouncing the light back and forth, back and forth across mirrors in there. So that means that the light endlessly bounces back and forth and back and forth. So if I were to shine my light in here and the light just bounced back and forth, back and forth, well, the momentum of the entire system would stay the same. But here's the weird part, the mass would actually increase. And the more light you put in there, the more mass this case would have. And it would feel just like regular mass. The more light you put into it, it would be harder to lift, it would weigh more, it would be harder to move, it would have more inertia, and it would act just like regular rest mass, even though it wasn't rest mass at all, it was relativistic mass. So yes, light can push because it has momentum, it has no rest mass, but it does have relativistic mass. So all of this means that yes, light can push stuff. So let's see if we can actually measure the push of light on something. Okay, so let's see if I can measure the force of 32,000 lumens. Three, two, one. Holy cow. Hey, look. It's changing weight. It's getting lighter, actually. But guess what? This isn't due to the light hitting it. It's actually due to the plate. Well, the plate is extremely hot. <laughs> it's actually only due to the plate heating up and causing air currents that's pulling it up and making it a little bit lighter. One reason you can tell that it's the air currents and not the light hitting it is because it's the opposite weight that I would have expected because it should have been pushing down on it, getting heavier, not pulling up on it, making it go to the negative. Okay, the flashlight didn't work, but what about my 5,000 milliwatt laser? Let's see if that increases the weight. Three, two, one. Nope. No weight increase whatsoever. <laughs> so what's going on here? I told you that light could push, so why isn't it increasing the scale here? Why isn't it pushing against it, making the weight go up? So how much does light actually push? Well, it turns out if you do the calculations for my 5,000 milliwatt laser here, it turns out that you're only creating around 10 to the negative eight newtons of force. 
That's the equivalent of the weight of only one microgram. So even though that force is extremely small, I'm going to attempt to still measure it. Okay, so how I'm going to be attempting to show that light can push is I'm going to be using this little apparatus here. So what I have here is a very thin wire hanging by a thread in a vacuum. You can see with the slightest movement, it shakes it and it turns back and forth and back and forth. So it only takes a very tiny movement on the outside of it or a very tiny torque for it to turn because it's free to rotate. So all I have to do is shine my light on the reflective surface and the light will transfer its momentum to that reflective surface. And that momentum will turn into a torque that should turn that string ever so slightly. Okay, it's completely still now. You can see it's not turning one way or the other. Let's see if I shine the light on it. It can perturb it and start it swinging in any direction. Three, two, one. Whoa, it moved it. Now it's swinging back slowly. Okay, so that is awesome. It actually did move. So at best we could hope for it to perturb it, meaning it starts to push it one way, but then it swings back the other way. So the best I could have hoped for is just a perturbance of it. It starts to wiggle a little bit. And that's exactly what I saw as soon as I put the light on it. I'd like to thank Brilliant.org for sponsoring this video. If you haven't checked out Brilliant.org, I'll put a link in the description here. So Brilliant.org is a cool problem solving website that teaches you how to think like a scientist and a physicist. So you can dive in and solve easy to challenging problems in their guided sequences on their website. So to support the Action Lab, go to Brilliant.org slash the Action Lab to sign up for free. But if you'd like to sign up for their premium subscription, the first 200 people that click the link in my description will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So head over to brilliant.org slash the action lab. And also if you haven't subscribed to the action lab yet, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified when my latest videos out. And if you haven't subscribed to the new action lab subscription box, head over to theactionlab.com to get yours today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.